How does a disease cause its hosts to travel more? Diseases that cause changes in the behavior of their hosts are nothing new. Rabies causing animals to bite others is the best known example, but there are plenty of other often nightmarish behavior altering diseases. Scientists have discovered a disease, called change of vacation, international destination, that causes its human hosts to travel more than they would normally. They are not sure why it is doing it, but they suspect it is to ensure that it does not die out after infecting everyone in a local community. How is the disease changing the behavior of its hosts so that they travel more? Preferably this disease is caused by a virus, but it is not a hard requirement. In vino veritas. In wine lies the truth. There is a genuine albeit extremely rare condition called Otto Brewery syndrome. In very non-technical terms, an affected person has fermentation occurring in their gut to produce ethanol, which then intoxicates the person as if they had ingested alcohol through more conventional means. Imagine a virus that is spread by touch or body fluids that induced severe Otto Brewery syndrome, not continuously but cyclically with increasing peaks. The cycles are over a period of several days, so a patient gets drunk, then sobers up and shows no sign of Otto Brewery syndrome, then several days later gets more drunk and so on, until eventually the ethanol dosage is at toxic levels. Every time a patient is in a drunk phase they are likely to spread the disease through contact with others by ignoring even normal personal space limits and or by infecting those who restrain them when they become too obnoxious. Now we put patient zero in a fairly affluent society but one with strict limits on freedom of speech, maybe even a social credit system of some sort. Patient zero is at work when s, he ignorantly becomes roaring drunk and lets everyone know what s, he thinks of the available equipment, the manager and the ruling body of the country. During this rant, lots of people are touched and infected as patient zero staggers around. S. He is not preaching revolution or sedition so the police are not called on the spot, but when patient zero sobers up S. He decides that taking an overseas holiday or emigrating would be a really good idea. This process is repeated for a fair proportion of patient zero's co-workers and family who were infected when they behave similarly in the next week, as the initial response is very likely to be a police investigation anyone who has any sort of a guilty conscience and enough money is going to run for it. Now let's look at what happens to patient zero and the first few cohorts of infected people. They arrive in their destination countries of first choice and proceed to make even worse drunken asses of themselves. Repeatedly. Due to this behavior they either are deported or flee voluntarily to their country of second choice before they can be deported, infecting more people along the way. Intermittent drunkenness is not likely to be recognized as a transmittable disease for a considerable period. Sustained drunkenness would be recognized quickly, as soon as the police put someone in the cells to sober up and they were still drunk 12 plus hours later there would be a doctor called in who would be comparing notes with other doctors very quickly. By the time this disease is recognized as such it would be able to spread very widely.